So yeah, thank you very much for joining this talk and let's get started. So first of all, as always, the just express it here in, uh, only my own, not from my employer. And so my name is legally Sungja Park and I have a coffee shop name, SJ. And nowadays I prefer SJ because it's easier to consistently pronounce. So please feel free to call me SJ. Currently working on AWS and currently maintaining a small Linux kernel subsystem called Daemon and each user space tool Daemon. So today I want to introduce about Daemon in a nutshell in short time as much as possible. Um, and also I will provide you some Daemon side updates that made since last year's kernel summit talk because there were some more changes. Um, and also, I'd like to spend some time for sharing the future plans of Daemon that will include three small uh, sub-projects for Daemon itself and two more projects that will use Daemon as each framework. And finally, conclusion and remaining Q&A will follow. Uh, and also, because I'm almost always very bad at managing time. I will, I, try, I will try to keep time for each of the topics and we'll give you some Q&A time at the end of the topics. But uh, if you have some questions, please feel free to interpret, interrupt. <laughs> yeah, so Damon in a nutshell. So why we are doing all of this kind of crash thing because the demand for memory is increasing while the uh, costs are not dropping like the demand and fortunately there are some hardware solutions like CXL memory or some more interesting things but unfortunately those will not come as a drop in replacement and therefore it would be difficult to get free lunch and therefore we need some software side change to maximize the benefit and therefore we need some more access aware system operations and how we can be access aware to that we first need to need to be able to monitor the data access pattern and understand that and how the data access would look like over time so if we say if we draw a picture by time and the address range of the memory we will show access are being made sometime somewhere occasionally like this way, as time evolves, the access will be made in various address space. And what would be the ideal shape of the data access monitor that should capture all the access of the picture and uh, for the space granularity would be ideal to be bit, that is, it would be ideal if we can monitor all the access in bit level, or maybe electron level would be even much ideal. And in terms of the time, it would be very ideal if we can catch the access in one second divided by the CPU frequency divided by number of CPUs, then that would be really ideal, right? And in some case, because there could be some more case, it might be better to, uh, it might be better to pursue speed of light. And also how much of these pictures should be recorded to get the full picture? maybe we should at least start from the beginning of the monitoring. And if possible, if we can have a time machine, it would be really ideal if we can start from the Unix timestamp zero. Yeah, these are just ideal thing and therefore it would be really hard to achieve. And therefore, Damon starts from the fixed granularity monitoring and in this, in here, the fixed granularity is just letting users to somehow no best one and set that. For that, Daemon is providing two parameter called NR bin regions and sample interval that those are 10 and five milliseconds by default for, the, uh, for those. And then Daemon checks access to only one page per region. Here, the region is the total monitoring target address space divided by the NR bin regions in, in same size. And here we believe that the users are wide enough to know the regions, the pages in each region would have similar access frequency 
and uh, for v believe that we are okay to sample access to only one random page inside each region because user will be white. You don't know many things, right? And so if someone wants very, very fine-grained accurate monitoring research, then they may be able to set the NRBN regions as the uh, total monitoring target memory size divided by page size. Then they can do the page granularity monitoring. And we think that this that is good enough, but maybe we can further compact the amount of the recording output, the monitoring output, by aggregating some of the sampling research. For that, we introduced new user specifiable time interval called aggregation interval, which is 100 milliseconds by default. And then we count number of the sampling intervals that we have found the access to each region per aggregation interval. So we count that from beginning of the aggregation interval and then reset that at the beginning of the next aggregation interval. In this way, we can know uh, which region is how frequently accessed. We call this counter as NR accessage or just access rate. In this way, we can further compact the monitoring uh, research size. And then let's remind the definition of the region. So the region is supposed to be formed as all the pages inside the region are having similar access frequency. And therefore, uh, there would be that would make no sense to have this kind of snapshot because there are three regions that having similar access frequency. And therefore we can merge adjacent regions that having similar access frequency at the end of the aggregation interval and then let the users to show the merge zone uh, snapshot. But the access pattern will change over time dynamically, right? And therefore the merged regions will not uh, keep the good definition of the regions. And therefore, we split each region randomly at the, at the beginning of the aggregation interval, which user already, after user has already seen the merged research, we split those in a random way. In that way, by continuing this at the beginning of the aggregation interval and end of the aggregation interval, we can uh, make the split operation to revert unnecessary merged regions operations and vice versa and we can and therefore the definition of the regions still uh, makes sense and therefore we can continue uh, sampling only one page per region and here because the number of the regions cannot exceed some of the range you just can set a minimum and maximum number of regions using two parameters and then Damon will approach doing splitting and merging operation if the research of the splitting and merging can violate the user specified range. In this way, you just can control the accuracy and the overhead. And we wanted one more thing. So we now get some make sensible snapshot research, right? But uh, the, each of the snapshot is having only the information for last aggregation interval that could be a very short time and it would be that sufficient to make some wide action. And therefore we add one more count per region called age. The age, stand, age is the number of the last aggregation intervals that the region was having similar access rate. And therefore now each of the snapshot can have some of the history information. As a result, we can say that Damon as a access monitoring research snapshot generator and the users can record that or we'll just use each of the newly generated snapshot. So it, in short, the snapshot that Damon provides answers to which memory region is how frequently accessed for how long time with controllable overhead and accuracy. And these are the snapshot outputs that you can get using Damon user space tool. From this, and from this point, why by, <clears throat> by showing this snapshot, someone might think that 
isn't this information enough to make some kernel just works? Say, we have found the seven megabyte regions that not access at all for 59 seconds. And there are some regions that access 100% time for 12 seconds and 17 seconds. So maybe we can make some wise uh, operation to those, even inside kernel. And therefore, we made a new feature called daemon-based operation schemes. It finds regions of interesting access pattern of the users from the snapshot and then apply a requested action. For example, we can page out memory regions that are not accessed at all for more than two minutes or use THP for access regions that are showing 50% access rate for more than one minute, and et cetera, et cetera. And multiple requests can be requested to Deimos. And therefore, Deimos receives firstly two basic parameters called access pattern and action. The access pattern is the access pattern of our interest, the user's interest, and it can be specified as three ranges of size of the region, access rate of the region, and age of the region, and therefore six parameters in total. And of course, we need to receive the action input, which can be some memory operations like page out, use THP, use regular page, etc. And the target access pattern based specification of the Deimos target region can be effective, but not that easy to be tuned. That is, it at least requires to set six parameters, and the optimum variable would depend on the dynamic characteristic of the system and workloads, and therefore it could be very challenging to set the maximum values. And therefore we introduce a new parameter called quarter, which can be set by user to specify the maximum amount of resource that they must can use to apply the requ requested action to the uh, memory regions in specifiable amount of time. For example, we can ask they must to uh, page out memory regions that are not accessed for more than two minutes, but up to only 100 megabytes per second. In this way, uh, we can avoid demos consuming too much system resource or making too radical change to the system. Um, and also, the, inside the quarter, demos is prioritizing the region and then apply the action to more prioritized regions first. And this prioritization logic is based on the context. For example, if the action is page out, all the pages are prioritized. And if the action is, for example, using THP, then more hot pages are prioritized. So that was the daemon basics. And any questions about this side? I think we have about two minutes to handle this. Of course, if you don't have a question now, you don't need to uh, ask right now. We will have the time for remaining Q&A. If not, I think we can just go forward to on more time because the real topic that I want to discuss with you is the final one. So let me provide some updates that made on Daemon since the last year's Corn Summit. So the first major changes that we have made on Daemon after last Corn Summit was uh, not that I have shared as a plan at the time, but a new feature that requested by some users. So actually, no future plans that I shared last year at the Corn Summit has not made, but some few users requested features has made, which were I also didn't expect it. The first one is demos tried regions. This is a feature for exposing the demos found target regions to users. Uh, this can be useful for this was firstly requested by users who were unable to trust Deimos anyway. So they was unable to trust Deimos and they wanted to know whether Deimos is making some silly uh, actions. And therefore this feature can be used to debug the Deimos itself or the Deimos request that you just made, for example, whether they have made two naive target access pattern or not. And also this can be used for query-like efficient monitoring research collecting. That is, 
As I have explained before, the Deimos scheme can specify the target access pattern, and therefore using that, uh, the daemon output, the daemon's monitoring output snapshot is not that huge. It could still take some space, and therefore you can pick only the monitoring results of your interest. For example, you can get only the which of the memory are not accessed for more than specific time and etc. And this feature has been merged in 6.2. And the second feature is called Deimos filter. So most of the difficulties at using Deimos is, to be honest, the tuning problems. And uh, though we have the target access pattern and even quarters, sometimes people also want to control the target by not access pattern, but non-access pattern information that users can anyway know. For example, they can for this, we have made this feature that users can filter the Deimos action target using non-access uh, pattern information, like whether the backing content of the page is file or anonymous data, and what is the belonging memory C groups of the page, and address range of the region, and belonging processes. Using this, we can, for example, ask Deimos to apply this scheme, apply this action to anonymous pages of these specific C groups if it's in the other range of the NUMA node X, but exclude the pages for this critical process or some important process. So this feature has first implemented with the backing content filter and memory C group filter and then merged in 6.3 and then expanded to support the address range and the belonging process uh, in 6.6. .6. Then the third feature, third major feature was called pseudo moving average access rate based snapshot generation. Uh, as explained at the beginning, daemon snapshot is only completed for every aggregation interval, which is 100 millisecond by default. Uh, having the snapshot by 100 milliseconds would be not that slow, but uh, users can set the aggregation interval as they want, and we found some of the users are setting it actually pretty long, and therefore, in some case, if they want to set it too long, the uh, snapshot generation would be too slow in some case, and therefore, we have made some pseudo moving average like algorithm that can uh, provide some reasonable access rate for every sampling interval rather than every aggregation interval. Using this, you just can get some reasonable data access pattern research, monitoring research snapshot for every sampling interval. And this could, we believe that this could be useful for some cases that who want to turn daemon on by default always that is currently with the basic parameters, basic values of the parameters, which using the five millisecond sampling interval and 100 millisecond aggregation interval, usually daemon CPU usage is about two to 3% of single CPU time, but I want that to be much lower to be able to be enabled by default always. And the final major feature of this update is daemon apply interval. Actually, the moving average snapshot was developed for this one, to be honest. That is, because the snapshot was made, made for every aggression interval, Deimos timing was unnecessarily coupled with the aggression interval. That is, Deimos was able to work only for every aggression interval. That is unnecessary uh, coupling, and that makes the Deimos a bit unflexible, and therefore we modified Deimos to use the pseudo-moving average based access rate. And this feature has merged in 6.7, I'll see one now. And yeah, so that was the major Daemon update, but I want to share just one more update about Daemon Just Space Tool. The Daemon Just Space Tool was basically uh, designed 
assuming the offline monitoring usage of daemon and after that daemon has evolved so much uh, for online usage especially and uh, for there was some problems in daemon just space tool but recently it has designed again to support the online daemon usage and recently released as one of the part of the preparation of the OS Summit Europe 2023. So yeah, that was the second thing, the update of the daemon since last year's con summit. Uh, any questions or comments about the update? In the chat. Cool. Yeah, we can on more time for next topic, which I want to spend most of the time if possible. Yeah, so finally this one, the daemon future plans. The first plan is called aim-oriented feedback-driven daemon's aggression, aggressiveness or the tuning. So basically the tuning, I already mentioned about the difficulty of daemon's tuning. Basically the access pattern based target specification is difficult because it requires six parameters tuning. And even though we have quarter, the quarter value is still not that easy. And therefore, uh, currently most of the daemon users are setting different aggressiveness setting of daemons and then should run tests and find the best one and use that. But the situation can be changed. That is once their system once their service is deployed to the wild, then they will show more uh, dynamic access pattern and workloads and characteristic and unexpected usage of their service. And then sometimes it turns out that the quarter value that they were believing that it was best was turned out to be not the best. And also this is especially difficult when uh, multiple demos schemes are being used and need to make some balance between different two schemes. And therefore, we have designed very uh, simple feedback-driven aggressiveness auto-tuning. That is, what we were thinking is that uh, Deimos quarter could be a good way for controlling aggressiveness, but currently we are asking users to be perfect at understanding of the underlying mechanism of daemon and find the best value for best output of the daemons. That is, we are asking users to teach daemons how to work. That could be some, in some way, can be thought of as unnecessary coupling of policy and the mechanism. That is, users are currently needed to uh, understand the mechan underlying mechanism and make the best policy based on that. So the idea is to let the users to feed and tame daemons. They can uh, let daemons know what is the resulting system status that they want. That is, some, someone can want 30% of three pages of the system. Someone can want the daemons to keep the pressure store time for memory pressure store time of the system about 1% or, or 0.05% and based on the, uh, until keeping the PSI level, just proactive memory as much as possible. And also if we have two conflicting schemes like making THP scheme and splitting THP scheme, and then we can ask the goal of the collapsing scheme as increase the utilization of the THP to specific percent and making the split scheme to aim at uh, dropping the utilization rate of THP in such a way. So we have made very, very simple uh, feedback loop algorithm and applied this to receive the user's goal and current score of the, goal, of the target value and then automatically adjust the next aggressiveness based on current aggressiveness. Using this, actually this idea has shared quite long before. It, the idea has shared on last year Con Summit and uh, while 
for preparing of this talk, I had to make some progress. And fortunately, I was able to send the first RFC patch set for this feature uh, just a few days before. So yeah, it was done by presentation driven development and it works very well. So for <coughs> testing this, we have tested some of the realistic benchmark workloads of Parsec3 and Splash2x uh, aiming 10 seconds, 0.5% memory pressure stored time as a goal. And then we have compared the research of the residential set size and runtime of the workload and the PSI for original one and the proactive recommendation scheme that is not tuned at all and the schemes that tuned for each workload offline using our previous work called Deimos and this one. Uh, as you can show, the older bars are better as lower and the auto-tuning based online tuning approach has achieved something similar to the offline tuned ones, but in terms of the PSI, it was the best one. So any questions or comments about this new plan? Cool. Thank you very much. So I think we can go to the second one. So we, I have prepared three future plans. This is the second one called access contiguity over memory auto scaling. So background, there are some people who are trying to use collaborative memory over subscribed virtual machine systems. That is in this system, Guest virtual machines are supposed to voluntarily report the pages that pages in guest that the host is okay to reuse for any purpose, probably for high utilization of the memory and memory was subscription. So the best good example is the free pages reporting, of course. And after that, the host can guest can just uh, access the pages as usual, that is, they can just allocate that again and access that again. Then the host will detect the access using the page fault mechanism and then allocate a new uh, physical page frame to the guest. In this system, guests are having some requirements. Firstly, the guest should be memory frugal without performance impact. If they don't, they will have no pages that can be reported to the host and therefore the entire memory utilization of the host will be low. Secondly, they should keep the report time free page contiguity because uh, free pages reporting like reporting mechanism should cap the aggressiveness of the reporting because if we report all the free pages in page granularity, the overhead could be high. And therefore by default, the free page reporting is reporting in two megabyte granularity and the two megabyte granularity free pages are needed. And therefore the contiguity, which is still the long standing issue of the Linux kernel can apply it here. And even though we somehow made the report time free pages contiguity, post report time contiguity is still required in some case if the host is using some kind of huge page size. In the case, it, for example, if the host is using only two megabyte page size, and if the guest is using four, four kilobyte page size, and a guest has reported two megabyte contiguous free pages to the host, but if the guest needs to access to only one page inside the two megabyte contiguous memory region, then the host should return whole two megabyte memory to the guest. And therefore, it would be better to keep the contiguity of the reported pages even after the report. And finally, in some more aggressive case, the system users want the guest to even forgive the pages for storing the metadata of their pages, like struct page, to maximize the oversubscription. Here we have some, we already have some existing solutions, but they have some challenges. 
Firstly, to be memory frugal, we can use daemon based predictive reclamation or some other similar predictive reclamation approaches. Nowadays, we have some predictive reclamation approaches, right? And secondly, for report time contiguity, we can do predictive compaction, but the compaction could fail due to the isolation and migration failures due to some pinned pages or some pages that are still actively being used. And in case of the proactive reclamation, more than really required granularity compaction could be made. For example, we need only two megabyte contiguity, but the compaction would try to compact more than that. And therefore that could be some waste of the resource. And for the post report time contiguity, unfortunately, I was unable to find a good solution. Uh, that was my best knowledge. I hope to learn if there is any possible solution today. And to minimize the metadata for reported pages, we can use memory hot remove. That is, we can offline and hot remove the entire memory block, then we can free metadata for the memory block, and therefore we can uh, free out the start page like metadata. And one of the remaining challenge for this approach is we will need to orchestrate this kind of multiple corner features which were not designed to be worked together from the user space. And therefore it is quite complex and could be inefficient. And therefore, I am proposing a new kernel feature that designed for this requirement, that is access continuity aware memory autoscaling or ACMA in short. So it aims to provide better solutions for each of the problem if possible and provide efficiently orchestrating each of the solutions and provide some easy to use user space interface so that users can feel that kernel is just working. For this, we are we we introduced two new definitions that is something that we will need to uh, implement on top of current Linux kernel. The first one is a new metric called daemon working set. That is the memory regions that daemon has shown some access within some user specifiable time period. For example, uh, memory regions that daemon has shown access within last one minute or two minutes or something. And this is something that Daemon can always be able to get. And the second one is something that might be radical or controversial. So I'm calling this as a stealing operation. Uh, this operation will receive the memory region as an input, memory address range as an input, and migrate pages in the given physical address range out of the range, and then take the pages of the range which is very similar to the contig mem alloc. And then it will do nothing with the pages, but just report that to the host as free to use from the host side. And if on, as a result of the stealing, if an entire memory block is completely stolen, then this operation will further hot remove the block and free the metadata and report the freed pages to the host so that the host can use all the pages and the metadata of the memory block. So this might be uh, quite similar to Voltaio MEMS memory reduction operation. And using these two new concepts, the workflow of the ACMA will be like this. If the daemon working set to free memory ratio is higher than a threshold say 200%, that is, if daemon is finding more than 200% of the working set is free, then it just thinks that the system is in quite calm peace and therefore ste starts stealing the report granularity contiguous regions from the last available memory block, call the pages first. And then this will reduce the ratio. And if the ratio is becomes lower than a threshold, say 100%, it will stop stealing and then start running daemon-based project reclamation until the ratio reaches the threshold. That is, if the daemon-based reclamation is starting, then it will find cold pages and then remove that 
the cold pad switch are not the daemon working set. And this could work based on the access pattern of the system, but wouldn't work based on the uh, access pattern of the system. That is, if the system is not having enough cold pages, then uh, protein reclamation will not make any more progress. And therefore, the ratio can be further decreased. And if it decreases lower than yet on the threshold, for example, 50%, then we start returning the stolen pages, the pages that uh, closer to not yet fully stolen memory block first. And also, we will do hot get the previously hot removed memory block if needed, based on the memory demand to make the ratio over the threshold. And yeah, so our expectations about this idea is that the system will get the free memory over size that relative to the working set by the setting of the threshold. That is, we can have 50 to 100% of free memory of the working set if we use the above example. And the compaction will be done for only report granularity contiguity and the Tearing will fail less frequently, hopefully, because we are stealing cold pages first, and that would because that would mean that there are no active users of the pages, and therefore that would have lower probability of meeting the active user of the pages during the migration process. And there are only three thresholds, and therefore maybe it could be easy to use. And more hopes or crazy thoughts would be. Maybe this could, this was initially designed for virtual systems, memory oversubscribed me virtual systems, but could be useful for general memory oversubscribed systems and auto scaling might be. And also this could be somehow in future could be extended to be yet another memory pool for contiguous memory allocation. That is, if we can have the memory allocation contiguous memory allocation interface on ACMA. And if the ACMA is using the stolen pages, which are contiguous anyway, as the memory pool for the allocation, maybe it could also be used for contiguous memory allocation purpose. In that case, we may call ACMA as access over CMA maybe. So currently no implementation at all, but just the sheer idea and detailed RFC idea has sent to the mailing list. Any questions or comments about? Uh, I have some questions about the pages uh, stealing. Actually, uh, in my opinion, maybe you can consider um, uh, offloading the pages entirely from the uh, guest to the host. I mean, uh, 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 for code pages, we may, uh, first we could uh, uh, reclaim the page, uh, offload the pages from the main memory to the storage. For the even code page, code pages, we could actually do one step further. You know, steal the pages from the guest to the host. And uh, the advantage of this is once we trigger some page fault, the pages will be automatically pulled back to the. Uh, Guest. So I don't think we need to worry about you know setting the uh, 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 what is that called the uh, uh, how to remove how to uh, add pages or uh, memory. Um, actually, I think that the hot remove and hot add is still needed for freeing the metadata of the pages that reported to the host. So I have a question about the whole stealing, which is the host will remove the pages from the guest without actually asking the guest for any kind of uh, permission, which implies that uh, if the guest wants to map that page into any processes page table, uh, because the process wants to use it, it can't do that until it first um, tells the host that that particular region is no longer eligible um, to be stolen. Uh, is that right? Um, yeah, so, and in here we are just make that as an assumption that host will not remove the 
guest memory, while guest is not aware that, that is host should still keep the uh, memory that, rep that already had removed from the guest point of view so that the guest can still hot add that back when it yeah, needed. Right. So, so that is, this is the collaborative approach and therefore the host should also collaborate in that way. Right, but it also implies that either um, there will be a certain amount of delay whenever you want to first um, instantiate a page in the page cache that was previously cold but now needs to be in use because you can't do that without first notifying the host. Um, and since this, these are contiguous regions, um, if the guest needs to map a 4K page from a small file that happened to be in that large contiguous region, the guest has to pull that entire contiguous region back from the eligible to be stolen list. Is, yeah. is that fair? Yeah, that's yeah. fair, and that delay could be problematic in some case, and that's why we are providing the third threshold, mm -hmm. which can guarantee the minimum amount of free pages that relative to the working set. That is, if we can sure the working set uh, memory demand will not uh, increase that much that rapidly, say no more than fifty percent of the workload within. Uh, at least some time, then maybe we can set a 50% as the third threshold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because part of it is it's not just simply free memory, it's just if that page hap if that page happens to contain the already cached uh, file um, from the storage device, you know, from the file system, then we either have to pull back that entire contiguous region from the host or page that page into an existing free page and reread it from the file system just so that we can avoid releasing this large contiguous region back to the host. And that becomes an interesting trade-off that the guest needs to make. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? Right. Yeah. Yep, so we have one more future plan and we have three more minutes. <laughs> so. Um, the fi final one is Deimos auto tuning based tiered memory management. That is, at, from the early days of the Daemon, there were some people who are crazy enough to use that for uh, tiered memory management. That is, finding the cold pages and place that in the lower uh, tiered memory and find the hot pages and place them in uh, more faster upper layer tiered memory. And Unfortunately, we made no progress in the area so far from the at least upstream version of Deimos, mainly because I wanted to do, but I still don't have the test setup, unfortunately. That was one of the reasons. Anyway, while I'm not making the progress, some people have made some their own downstream approach of using Deimos for tiered memory management, but they were having quite various approaches that depend on their use case and also there's some creativity and therefore the research were also very bright for someone that was just a waste of time and for someone that was something that quite interesting. And therefore I wanted to at least share some of the ideas because with the auto tuning feature, maybe we can have some reasonable idea here. So the idea is very simple. So for each CPU independent NUMA node, which we can also call each of the tier. If the node has a lower node, then we demote cold pages of the current node to the lower node, aiming the little fraction of free memory of the current node, say 5% of the current node. And we, if the node is having an upper node, then we will again set yet another demo scheme, which will promote hot pages of the current node to the upper node, aiming high fraction of utilization of the upper node, say 96%. In that way, if, if we have only one node, then there will be no upper node, no lower node, so no change will be made. If we have two nodes, then we will have one scheme for demoting 
cold pages of the node zero to node one and promoting hot pages from node one to node zero. And if we have more nodes, we can extend the scheme in this way. So the expectations is that using this, the Deimos auto tuning will control the speed so that it doesn't make too rapid changes and the and high utilization of the upper nodes and low utilization of the lower nodes with the hotter pages and colder pages are expectable. And also we can maybe think about future extensions of making this as a general numa balancing idea or combining with the ACMA. That, and we have no implementation at all at the moment and the detailed RFC idea is sent to the mailing list. I think it's out of time. Any? So I will just skip some part and just want you to say you that if you have questions, you have more channels and also we will have a BOF after next break from 4.30 at Potomac E or G. So hope to see you again at BOF for addressing more questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>